Hello. We have two stories today of family drama. Our first story is a modern day fairy tale with a twist and a small update. A young cinder fellow gets a slap in the face after spending hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars slaving away on a wedding gown for his evil aunt. But there's no fairy godmother or talking mice here. It's all pumpkins. And he never gets to go to the ball. Well, time is running out for this entitled aunt. Story one. I'm a 40-year-old male and I have a sister who's 30. She's getting married in a week. The groom proposed to her a year ago at a family dinner that left everyone speechless, but very happy for them as they are longtime companions. During this dinner, my sister asked my son, 17-year-old male, to make her a wedding dress. My son has always loved design and fashion. He took technical courses in these areas and sewing, and even his friends keep asking for his clothes because they are so beautiful. He agreed but said that he needed time and that he would need her opinion constantly. At first, my sister was very annoying. My son drew about 50 dress designs in a month, and she only liked one, which he continued with. He sewed it with great quality fabric, which I paid for as I wanted to get involved in a certain way. For five months, he made several adjustments to suit her wishes, as she always complained about something. After a while, he arrived at the final model, and it was just amazing. My mother cried seeing my sister in the dress, and I confess that I almost got emotional too. The problem was that last week my son came to talk to me about the wedding invitation that had not arrived for him, but for other family members. I thought maybe he didn't need one, but it still felt weird. I messaged my sister raising this issue and she replied that she didn't want any underage people at her wedding because there would be alcohol. I asked if she was going to make an exception for my son, but she cut me off and said no. There are no children in our family. My son is the only minor so I didn't see any sense in this rule for family members. And to make matters worse, my son was very sad and cried because he spent months on this dress and couldn't go to the wedding. I was very upset and told my sister that she should look for another dress as soon as possible as she would no longer wear the one my son made. She called and yelled at me, saying I was being unreasonable and that I couldn't do this. My mother called me saying I should deliver the dress and follow the rules. But I didn't and hung up on her. Because of this, the family is divided. Many agree with me and condemn my sister's action, saying she could only make an exception. But another part says I'm unreasonable and I'm spoiling her big day. I don't think I'm being wrong, but just rational and paying her back in kind. So am I the jerk? Update. I talked to my son about the suggestions you guys gave me and he agreed to sell the dress at market price. He calculated the price of everything and the value was quite high. We sent the proposal to my sister and she hated it. She said she couldn't afford it because it was too expensive and it should be a gift because she is family. I responded by saying that it was too easy to say she was family to get a free dress, but not enough to include my son. She cried on the call and begged me not to ruin her day, but I didn't call because that to me was utter crock. At no point did she offer to just let my son go or apologize for it. And for anyone who said that maybe she's homophobic, I'm not sure. But I think who could be influencing her is her fiancé, who is a Christian and has never been close to my son. However, I don't care if he's doing it or not. If she wants to exclude my son from this event, then she will also be cutting ties with me. And for those who are asking for a photo of the dress, I'm sorry to disappoint you. But my son didn't agree, and unfortunately, I won't post it because of that. If anything else happens, I'll let you know. Until then, thank you all. In the comments, ResDog said, not the jerk, he should go and wear the dress. (laughs) Opie replied, would definitely be unexpected. Butterfly1 said, so your sister can't have children at her wedding, but will use your son as child labor to make her wedding dress? She's the jerk. Prestigious Air added, right? This is totally child labor. Noodle Fanboy added, unpaid child labor at that. This is so ridiculous. There is clearly something else going on here. There's no way that this bride isn't inviting her nephew because alcohol is being served. The timing is also interesting. The son talked to OP two weeks before the wedding about not getting an invite. That seems like a pretty tight turnaround for wedding invitations if they were going out at around the same time. Pretty sure catering deadlines require two weeks notice. You might be asking, Cece, why do you care? Well, This is relevant because it also seems to me like the evil aunt purposely remained silent as her nephew slaved away on this dress, 
making no mention of the age restriction at her nuptials. How did she think this was okay? The timing sucks for her, one week to find a new dress, but I'm going to have to go with not the jerk. Our second story of family drama is kind of like going and watching an IMAX. It's big, it's beautiful, and it has world-class projection. Okay, it's not really about the IMAX so much as a sheer desperate need for drama being projected onto everyone else. So get your tickets, find your seat, because it's going to be coming at you from all angles. Not unlike this next divorced mom. Story two. My ex's new wife called me three weeks ago and said that she just realized her daughter's birthday was on my week. She asked me to please bring my son to the party or drop him off the night before and they'd bring him back the next morning. She was very entitled about it. She presented me with two options when I don't have to do either. I said I would think about it and she got huffy and said he has to be at his little sister's party. I again said I would think about it and she continued to argue. So I hung up. The day before the party, I asked my son, do you want to go to sister's name's birthday party? He said he did, so I texted her to tell her we would be there and asked her for the time of the party. She told me it was at noon. So we got there at 1230 and there were no other cars, which was weird. When we went inside, my ex said he needed to talk to me and I said that wasn't necessary and asked where the party guests were. He said he needed to prepare me before I saw his wife. I said, why? Is she pregnant or something? He said she was, and I just rolled my eyes. I again asked where the party guests were. He said the party was at two, but they wanted to make sure I had time to put myself together before the party. I told it him he needed to quit with the soap opera drama because I don't have time for it. I took time out of my day to accommodate them, but they blew it. I'm not hanging out with them in an empty house for over an hour, and I'm not wasting gas to leave and come back. I took my son to the park and we had a nice day, but my ex texted me a bunch about how I was punishing his daughter for the pregnancy. I don't care that his wife is pregnant. My only response was a text that said, grow up. My son asked about his sister's birthday and I said there was a mix up with the party time, which is true, but that they would all celebrate together when he was at his dad's, so he was chill. My mom said I hurt the birthday girl, but she's one. She's not going to notice who is at her party. My mom told me to be the bigger person, but I feel there is a limit to that. I'm not going to reward lying and trickery in my ex any more than I would reward it if my six-year-old did it. Am I the jerk for leaving and not coming back? In the comments, Nona and Funtunt said, not the jerk. One, he could have been honest with you saying he needed a short talk with you before the party. Two, he could have planned the birthday party when he had his son. This is the norm in many divorced families. But why did you need to be there? Couldn't you just have dropped your son off? OP replied, no. It's a very, very bad idea to leave your kid with the other parent during your custody time. The other parent can then claim they have custody more than 50% of the time and take you back to court. It's devious and underhanded, but so is my ex. Dora, the urban explorer, said, not the jerk. They weren't honest with you. Your ex could have called you to tell you about the new pregnancy. They didn't need to trick you ahead of time. It was kind of you to show up with your child on your own parenting time. OP replied, Ah, but if he was honest with me, he wouldn't have gotten his soap opera moment. He is, after all, the main character of life, and we are all just supporting players in his story. Jokes aside, you're right, but that's never going to happen. He's allergic to honesty. The only reason I didn't suspect trickery was because his wife made the request, not him. But I guess he's rubbed off on her. Mama Fen said, Your ex and the woman he cheated on you with made demands on your time for the one-year-old affair baby sister's sake, then lied to you about that time because they wanted to discuss her new pregnancy with you and make sure you didn't throw a fit? On what planet do these people live? I'd seriously have to cross it off my map of places to visit. Not the jerk. OP replied, I don't think it's fair to call her an affair baby. She's a baby. She didn't do anything wrong. If anything, she's a fair mommy and he's a fair daddy. The baby is just a baby, but yeah, their planet is definitely a weird one. Oh goodness, this sounds like such a nightmare. For some reason, it reminds me of when people yell and talk slow to a person who doesn't speak the same language. We've all seen it. When someone talks to an adult like they're an idiot, meanwhile they probably understand the basics. This is similar with a hint of gaslighting. The ex is all like, oh, my poor ex-wife. She just doesn't know how to live without me. She is going to be devastated to find out I'm expecting another little one with my new, perfect wife. 
How will she possibly go on? Meanwhile, the ex-wife, OP, is all like, get over yourself. I'm so moved on. You're like a small little speck in my rear view mirror. In fact, I can barely see you. That's all for today. Have a good one. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.